بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ولا in the name of Allah may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon His final messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his companions and all those who follow him بإذن الله تعالى we will inshallah تعالى الحمد لله there are many people also online who are gonna be viewing this class already we have seven that are already viewing the class and we only have 14 right right now as I, as I look 19 you know so alhamdulillah uh it is not about uh the number is uh, is about the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses the time and we we can all gain the benefit uh we are uh this is round three i call it round three of the 40 hadith of Imam al Nawi, Allah. And basically, the idea is to benefit from these uh, narrations from many different angles. So, we are on, if we look at the introduction of Imam al Nawi, Allah, just for the blessings of it, if we just cover the introduction today, and then tomorrow, uh, next Monday, we will go through the, the first hadith. That's fine. If, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with, with, time, with time and per permits. Imam al Nawi, rahimahullah, in his introduction says, Praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the one who sustains the heavens and the earth. Allah, the, the capable. The one who manages all the creatures who sent messengers the blessings of Allah be upon, be, be upon them all. Right? The one who charges with his respo the responsibility of the messengers to guide. Praise be to Allah, the generous, the one who is able to increase by his bounties. And he says, I witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah, the overpowering, the noble, the generous, the forgiven. And I also bear witness that Sayyiduna Muhammad وسلم, was a slave and messenger, and his beloved, Al Habib, and his intimate, and the Khalil, and the best, Khayru Khalq al Rabb al Alameen. The best of the creations, the best of the creations, honored, honored by the Quran, which is an everlasting miracle that continues, that time evolves around it, it doesn't revolve around time. Time revolves around it. Allah is the creator of time, the owner of time, and He is time. So, Allah's Qur'an adapts, is able to adapt, and is suitable for all times. So He says that we have narrated from Ali ibn Abu Talib, from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, from Mu'ad ibn Jabal, from Abu Darda, from Ibn Umar, from Ibn Abbas, from Anas Ibn Malik, from Abu Huraira, from Abu Sa'id al Khudri. These are famous Sahabis. These are famous Sahabis that we always, always hear and hear their names being mentioned. Right? And on Umar, on Ibn Umar, on Ibn Abbas, on Anas Ibn Malik, on Abu Huraira, Abu Sa'id al Khudri, may Allah be pleased with them all. From these Names mention a hadith, right? And this hadith is what? That whoever preserves 40 hadith from my ummah, right? 40 hadith, whoever from my ummah preserves 40 hadith of the, of the affairs of the deen, Allah will raise them up amongst the righteous company of the ulama and of the people of knowledge. Allah will raise them up. Abu Darda said in his narration, now Imam al Nawi is giving you the variation from the different narration. Abu Darda said that, and I will be from amongst those 
uh, uh, I will be from for him on the day of rising an intercessor that the prophet said and a witness. Ibn Masud said, and it will be said to him, "Wa udhulu min kulli bab." Enter from any door of paradise that you want. Right? On Ibn Umar, who said, and he will be recorded, the person who memorizes, learns 40 hadith will be recorded amongst the people of knowledge. He will be considered amongst the people of knowledge. Now, Imam al Nawi rahimahullah, said that it has been agreed that this hadith, it, these hadith are considered weak, right? They have different paths, but it's weak. But he also mentions, but the people of knowledge, listen carefully because the people of knowledge state that in many books that using weak hadith for the fada'il, for the virtues, uh, uh, yeah. Is it on here? Yes. Is it on Facebook or? It's on Dars Dars al Quran. Dars al Quran uh, on Facebook. But I, I'm going to put the link on the on the YouTube Facebook page, inshallah, as well. So the the scholars they say that using weak hadith for the fadail al amal for virtuous actions is okay. This is where, it, you know how some, some people have, have mentioned reservation for, like, the book, uh, Fada'il al-Amal, right, uh, of Imam al-Kandalawi, rahimahullah. But he was a muhaddith. He was a scholar of hadith, in, right, and he was qualified. So the book is about Fada'il al-Amal. Yes, it has some weak hadith. But the, 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 the consensus amongst the scholars is that you can use weak ahadith for, for fada'il. Right? You see how... how so Imam al is saying this as well. And now Bahi, Bahi Imam al said, and many, many have written, because of this, many scholars have written 40 hadith. All the way from from Abdullah ibn Mubarak to Ibn Aslam at Tusi, uh, from uh, Al Ajuri uh, and, and many other Darakutni, uh, etc. And he said, But I have not written these 40 hadith because of that reason. He said, I, he said, I know that it is permissible to use weak hadith for the fada'il, the virtues. But, however, I am going by this hadith, and this is an authentic hadith, that the Prophet ﷺ said, let the one of you who witnesses convey it to the one who is absent. He said, this is the hadith that I am basing my intention upon. So I made istikhara, so he made istikhara to Allah to bless him in the process. And he said, many scholars wrote 40 hadith on many subjects, on manners, on, on creed. He said, I wrote it upon that which all of the sharia of Allah revolves upon the principles. So the, this is just to show the, the, the wisdom of Imam al nawi he, he would honor the scholars that wrote before. He would honor them. He would, uh, he would recognize their books. He would recognize, he had manners to recognize their books. And then this shows that in their effort for the deen, they were cautious in how they spend their time, and in what projects they embarked. Because Allah doesn't love the musrifun. Allah doesn't love those who waste. Right? Allah doesn't love those who waste. So therefore, when they would do something, they would do it 
خالصاً لوجه الله first of all sincerely for the sake of Allah and then they will do it they will they will recognize what's available see Imam al is saying look all of these books were written about this subject and he said I chose to wrote 40 hadith but about this other subject right not because uh, publishing a book for the sake of the name some people write books for the sake of putting the name in front of the book and that's it some people know the book but they don't know the author they don't know the story they don't know you know what, how much time did they spend you know in, in this in this work so the the important thing is many of the books the introductions are extremely important the introduction to know <laughs> I did I did a uh, I did a, a paper on four introductions of Imam al Nawi, and this is inshallah just to conclude this session. the The paper was about four books. One of the book was one of the book was the um, the forty hadith Imam al Nawi. Second book was Riyadh al Salihin. Third book was Kitab al Athkar. In Ramadan, we did it after Fajr, the introduction of Kitab al Athkar. Ten sessions. We did that. And Kitab al Majmu'ah. Kitab al Majmu'ah is 25 volumes on Islamic law. Okay? And these are works of Imam al Nawi. Of course, Imam al Nawi didn't complete the Majmu'ah. He did nine, approximately nine volumes. He passed away. And another imam picked up and, and continued working on it. So, in the introduction of each book, in the introduction of uh, 40 hadith, this is what he, he said. He said, people wrote about the 40 hadith. These are the scholars. These are the topics that they wrote about. And this is why I wrote about the 40 hadith. In Riyadh al-Salihin, he said, I wanted to make it easy on the people. On, he, he was considerate about the general... See how sometimes some people are not considerate about the general public. I mean, they, they have good intention, but sometimes the lectures are above the head of the general people. And it, it just totally misses the whole point, makes Islam a, a, a religion that is just too above the people's heads. Hmm? Uh, on on that that that's Quran. Put it. Tell to put Facebook. That that's the Quran. That's it. D a r s e. Quran. Q u r a n. If you look it up on Facebook, you'll find it. Inshallah. So. In 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 that. In, in in that um, when he when he was writing Riyadh al Salihin, he said, "You found it, you, okay." He he said, "The what I did is, I wanted to put for the people something because you know there's so many hadith. Look, there's so many hadith, and sometimes people read hadith." They separate from Quran. They get too busy, right? Or they just say, you know what? Forget that. That's too much. I'm just going to go with Quran. So they end up rejecting one or the other, right? Imam al Nawi is thinking, he's solution oriented. He said, I want to compile a book that has hadith by subject that deals with riyadat and nafs, meaning like exercise for the soul. Right? Tahdeeb, right? And purification of the soul, uh, fada'il. And he said, and I want to put a subject, and at the beginning of every chapter, I'm going to put Quran. Verses of the Quran related to the section of hadith. So yes, Quran, hadith. So anybody, it could be, it, this is, the Riyadh al is like a book that like every home should have. Every. It, get, it gives the family, it gives the family that, uh, that interaction with Quran and Hadith, right? On a subject base, because we like subject base, right? Now, and anybody can just go, go through it. 
Of course, there are all other great books similar, right? That like like Muntakhab uh, al-Hadith also has a, a nice selection of, of different. So it is good to know what's available. So Imam al Nawawi said, I made istikhara to Allah and I wrote the Salihin. Before writing any book, he will make istikhara to Allah and he will say, Wa ma tawfiq illa billah. And there's no tawfiq except with Allah. Now he's going to write Kitab al Athkar about dua. In Kitab al Athkar, he said, Many People wrote great books on du'a. But they wrote the chain of narration. Qala Muhammad Ahmed While the people went through the names, they got exhausted. So they don't make it to the du'a. Right? So by the time, so it, it, it became too complicated. Imam al he wanted to make it easy on the people. He says, so I minimized the chain. Only when it was needed. But other than that, I just focus on the dua and how and, and practices related to the dua. Then the last uh, Kitab al Majmu'a. Kitab al Majmu'a, there were two great scholars, one named Imam al Ghazali, who wrote Kitab al Wasit. Imam al Ghazali was such a, an ocean of knowledge that many of his books. Scholars can't, can't explain because of his level of knowledge. <laughs> so that, 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 that's how complicated his works are because of the depthness. So Imam al-Ghazali wrote Kitab al-Wasit. Imam al-Shirazi wrote Kitab al-Muhadhab. Imam al he said, as he's writing with his adab, with his manners, he said, Kana imaman jalilan, there are two great imams. Two noble great imams who wrote Katabu or Kataba Kitaban, they wrote two Jalilan, two honorable books. So he's already given respect to the authors and to the books. And then he mentions things that some points that need a clarification. So he said, I made istikhara to Allah. And that's how he began to explain. The book Al Muhaddab, one of those books, and it became known as Al Majmu'a, which ended up being an encyclopedia of 25 volumes that has the depthness of fiqh in, in the school of Imam al Shafi'i, Rahimahullah. But Imam al Nawi, if we look at, take lessons from his adab, from his manners, we find that number one, he will give recognition to previous scholars. Number two, he will recognize their works. He won't look down upon them. Number three, he will make istikhara to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number four, he will write, he will tell you the purpose of why he's writing. Right, this is, it, it teach, just in that, it, we get a lot of lessons inshallah. So next week, we will cover the hadith number one again. Actions are judged by their intention, but we will cover it from a different angle. And this explanation actually is, is the explanation of Imam al Nawi himself. And what better explanation than the one of the author himself? Right? Because he's the one that knows the, the angles that. So, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Amin. Wa sallallahu wa barakatuh, Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala wa sahbihi wa Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Why I come?